Hello out there, I am Niels and this here is my Prius. Well actually this is my second Prius. Here's the one I drive daily. But the second one, this one, I built myself. Partly just to fool around with some 3D modeling software, but also to explain the workings of Toyota's hybrid drive. Which isn't really Toyota's by the way. The patent was filed in 1969 by four Californian engineers. Still, I think it's a beautiful piece of engineering. It's bold, it's elegant, it's a true invention. It just deserves to be explained. I'll need to give a bit of context. You'll need to know what a transmission is, and what it's for, and then I can explain a simplified model of the hybrid drive. What's hybrid about the Prius is actually the transmission, the connection between engine and wheels. The engine of a Prius is an internal combustion engine, or a petrol engine, like you find in any other car. The power from the engine has to go to the wheels. The gears there are called the differential. Quite an ingenious piece of engineering in itself. But not the subject of this video. Let's just say it splits the power from the engine to the two front wheels. Now in between the engine and the differential, that's what we call the transmission and that's where the Prius magic happens. In a perfect world we would just weld in an axle and be done with it. That would work from about 50 kilometers an hour. Below that the engine does not have the power to drive a car. A gasoline engine needs speed before it can produce power. In standstill it can't even drive itself. You need to disconnect it, use a starter motor to get it running, let it rev up itself, and only then can we connect it to the wheels. But not directly. We need some soft connection. And such a soft connection is called a clutch. Basically two millstones grinding together, passing some force to the wheels and dumping the excess energy as heat. Lots of heat. When you reach, say, 50 kilometers, you can lock the plates together, but a normal clutch would have vaporized by then. So now you can pull up and drive, but not well. You see, combustion engines are really fussy about how they want to produce their energy. They don't like fast, they don't like slow, they demand exactly the right load, and when an engine is not happy, it starts burning more and more fuel with less and less output in return. So you put in a gearbox. Now the speed of the engine is more or less independent of the wheels, but only in distinct steps that are always too wide. There is one simple way to solve all problems. Completely take out the mechanic transmission and replace it by an electric generator and an electric motor. Now the engine can run at any speed it likes, and only the electric motor has to follow the speed of the wheels. Electric motors are much less fussy than petrol engines. They produce fine at standstill and at high speed. But again there is a downside to this design. If you convert energy, you lose energy, as heat. In this drive you can expect to lose 15 to 20 percent of what comes in of the engine. Now that you know some basics of transmissions, we can get to the hybrid drive. Let's imagine we're looking at a simple millstone clutch and we're thinking, how can we do better? Well, we just replace it with a generator. We don't mount it to the car though. We connect one part to one axle and the other part to the other axle. Just like a clutch in fact. And like the clutch, the generator gives friction which drives the car forward. It keeps up the friction until the two parts have the same speed. Then the friction stops. Both parts move as if glued together, like a clutch. Just one difference with the clutch. It doesn't convert friction into heat, but into ele electricity. When pulling up, you might generate about 30 kilowatts of energy. That's enough to light up a medium office building. It's a lot of energy. But lacking portable office buildings, what can you do with that sort of energy? Well, you build an electric motor in the drive line. 
and any electricity that comes out of the clutch you feed straight back into the motor. And there you go, the basics of the hybrid driveline. Let's take a closer look at what's going on when we pull up with this car. At first all energy is absorbed by the generator, then pushed back in by the electric motor. But while we're speeding up, less and less energy takes the electric path, while more and more is put through mechanically, through the axle. When both axles have the same speed, generation stops. But now the generator acts as if it's locked, so the petrol engine connects directly to the wheels. Super efficient. Now you'd think that it stops there, but no. Motor and generator now switch their function. The motor becomes a generator, converting force to electricity, then feeds it back to the original generator, which is now a motor. And now the axle gets speed from the engine and from the electric motor, so the engine can work at a lower speed. It's like a river flowing upstream. So motors are generators, and generators are motors. That's why Toyota calls them motor generators. MG1 at the engine side, MG2 on the other side. I want to stress that this is not a perpetual motion machine. Such machines do not exist. The drive takes away force, or really torque, from the outgoing axle, then feeds it back as speed to the engine axle. No energy is gained, ever. The hybrid drive, and the electric drive for that matter, do in essence what a gearbox does, exchange speed for torque, or torque for speed. Nothing more. You may have noticed the problem though. You cannot connect wires to a rotating coil. That's where the planet wheel comes in. But first, let's take a look at some electronics. Our hybrid drive needs some electronics. The voltage of generators is all over the place, and so is the frequency. But the motors need exactly the right voltage and the right frequency to run, depending on the speed and load. So the power has to be converted between generator and motor. Those electronics are called the inverter by Toyota. That inverter also determines from which MG power is drawn, and to which MG it is added. The inverter has to contain a small battery to do that, three capacitors in this case. But so far the hybrid drive does not need a big battery. Still, with all the electronics in place, why not add one? There's all kinds of tricks you can do with a battery. For starters, at traffic lights you can turn the engine off. You can pull up, get to the next light without even starting the engine. Great in city traffic. When the battery is empty, only then the engine will start. Then the engine will run at a pretty distant speed, which is an efficient speed, filling the battery and driving the car at the same time. And when the battery is full, the engine turns off and you are on battery again. This is much better use of the engine than in a normal car. A normal car would be either idling or working at a speed that's way too low for efficiency. The engine of our hybrid, on the other hand, is either running at an efficient speed, or just not running at all. When you pass the traffic jam, free to make speed, you can get full throttle from the engine, combined with the power of the battery in MG2. The Prius has pretty good acceleration actually, for a car with a small engine built for efficiency. When you are up to speed, cruising along, the battery will mostly do nothing at all. Remember, when you convert energy, you lose energy. Storing energy in a battery only makes sense in those special cases, start-stop driving or idling. And we can use the MGs as a brake, and use that energy to fill the battery. And last, you can drive on the battery. Not fast, not far. It's really mostly a party trick, but it's a great selling point. Back to the dreaded planet gear set. I think it really has only one purpose, to handle that connection between coil and wires and MG1. 
In smaller motors you might use sliding contacts, but I guess that's not an option for 30,000 watts of energy. You really, really want that motor to be fixed to the car. So you put in a planet gear set. A power split device in Toyota's words. The inner wheel, the sun gear, is connected to MG1. The wheels around that, the planet gears, are not connected at all, but their axles are connected to the petrol engine. The axle of the petrol engine goes through MG1, through the sun gear, and behind the planet gear it's connected to those small axles. The outer ring, the ring gear, is connected to the wheels, with MG2 wading in. Right now, the wheels are slowly rolling along, taking the ring gear with them. The engine is stopped, keeping the axles of the planets fixed. Now the sun gear and MG1 have no choice but to roll the other way. Right now, freewheeling while the car drives on the battery in MG2. Now if we lock MG1, the planet axles will give way in effect starting the petrol engine. The petrol engine will rev up, forcing the planets to a higher speed, and taking the sun gear and MG1 with them. MG1 is filling the speed gap between engine and wheels, like a clutch in fact. When the car goes fast enough to connect the engine directly to the wheels, the sun gear can stop. Now all the power can go only one way, to the ring gear directly driving the wheels. Then we get to the point where the wheels want to go faster than the engine, where the MGs switch their function. MG2 will send power to MG1, driving the sun gear around, now adding speed to the engine axles. Nice solution, but it completely messes up the speeds of the engines. Compared to my simple hybrid drive, the petrol engine now has to run slower to get to the same speed, and MG1 has to run much faster. You could put in more gears to keep at least one of them happy, but then MG2 gets a problem. Well, that's something that Toyota is still working on. In reality, Toyota rotated the driveline 90 degrees, and replaced an axle with a chain between ring gear and differential. Nothing really changes, the ring gear and MG2 are still directly connected to the wheels. This is how the hybrid drive is built into the first and second generation of the Prius, all engine parts in line with the battery in the back of the car. In the third and fourth generation they added another planet gear set. They call it the speed reduction device, but what it actually does is speed up MG2, so that now they can slow down all the machines together by changing the final gears. And Toyota is still fiddling with that. They have this drive now in the Prius, the Auris, the Yaris and a four-wheel drive, all with different ratios for the planet gears and their final gears. Apparently it's not easy to get that right. And that's it people, that's Toyota's hybrid drive, the dance of the three engines. I'll keep it running after the credits, thank you for watching.